Hi everyone, welcome back to this Intro to Seaborn series. Today I'll be showing you how to make a histogram with Seaborn using the hist plot. If you're familiar with Seaborn or if you've been following along with this series, you may know that the previous way to build a histogram was with the dist plot. Well, all of that changed with the newest version of Seaborn. In fact, you'll now see this warning telling you that the dist plot has been deprecated and instead you should use the hist plot to build a histogram. Seaborn version 0.11 comes with three new distribution plots and I've got to say I've been blown away by all of the new options that we now have. So let's get started with the basics of the brand new Seaborn hist plot. So let's get started coding with Seaborn. I'll go ahead and import Seaborn and alias that as SNS. And I just wanted to remind you once again, you will need to be working with the newest version of Seaborn to follow along. So you can check your version with this dunder. I'm working with version number 11. And I'm gonna load in some data from the Seaborn library. These data are about penguins. So we have various different measurements for different penguin species. Right now we have 344 observations, but I'm also gonna drop any null values that I have, and that'll leave me with 333 observations. And I'm just doing this for plotting purposes. So let's go ahead and build our very first Seaborn hist plot. To do that, I just reference the Seaborn library and call up the hist plot. And now what I can do is pass in a pandas series. So I'm going to pass in the penguins Kalman length. So this is just one of the columns in my data frame. And there we go, we have a nice histogram where we've binned up the various different Kalman length values that we saw in our data frame. There is also an alternative way to do the syntax here. We can pass the full data frame to this data argument and then pass in whatever column we would like to plot with the histogram to the X argument. This has the added benefit that let's say that we wanted to create horizontal bars instead of vertical we could actually just switch this to be Y instead, and that will produce a horizontal histogram. If you're familiar with the old Seaborn dist plot, you know that that used to come with a KDE plot plotted on top of our histogram, and we can actually turn that back on if we'd like here. So let's reference this KDE argument and set that equal to true. And now this will look very similar to what Seaborn produced for the old version of the dist plot. If you're not familiar with the KDE plot, I have a video all about it and I will link that in the description bar below. So by default, Seaborn will try to decide how many bins are appropriate for your data, but if you'd like to switch that, we have an argument called bins, and this accepts a couple of different things. Let's say bins equals 20 for now. What this will do is create 20 separate bins equally spaced across our range here. And we're seeing a much more granular view of what this approximate distribution looks like. If for some reason you have very specific locations that you'd like those bins to appear, you can also pass in a list here where each of these numbers I'm passing in are actually the start and stop locations of my histogram bins. So you might even choose to make your bins irregularly spaced for some reason. Two arguments that I've been finding to be super helpful are bin width and bin range. So let's check these out. Bin width, you can set this to be whatever value you'd like, let's say 10. And what this is doing is each of these bins now are exactly 10 units wide. And so this could be really useful if let's say you had some start and stop values in mind, you can pass those through to this bin range argument. Let's say maybe we start at 30 and we go to 60. And now my bins are stopping at every 10 units along the way. And I like this so much because we can have well-defined start and stop values and it's very easy to make this histogram more granular just by switching what the bin width looks like. In addition to bins and adding a KDE, you also have the option to change the statistic that's displayed on your y-axis. Let's take a look. The his plot also comes with this new stat argument, and I've been really enjoying this one as well. So let's take a look at what this can do. So first of all, by default, the stat that we normally look at is count. And so take a look at what is plotted over here on the y-axis. We actually have a count of how many penguins we saw with each type of Coleman length for each bin. But we can actually change this statistic that we're plotting on the y-axis. You have a couple of different options, but the first one here I'll demo is density. 
And with this one, again, pay attention to what's happening on the y-axis. Now we're getting a sense of what the density looks like for this distribution. And so just to let you know, when you set the stat to be density, what we're doing now is that the area of the histogram should sum to one. So we're trying to emulate a probability density function. And so what that means is that for each of these bars, if we actually took the height in this density scale and multiplied it by the width of this bar, and then summed up all of these bars, we should end up with a value of one. So you might switch over to this density if you're trying to get a representation of what the PDF looks like. And another statistic you can access here is probability. So if we switch stat over to probability, now we'll see that each of these bars is actually representing the probability that a penguin will end up in this bucket. So now it's the height of all of these bars that should sum to one because we're dealing with probability space. As a final statistical property, I wanted to demo what the cumulative argument will do. So I've switched my stat over to probability, and I've actually used a little bit of styling here as well. But what I can do is switch this cumulative argument over to true. So this gives us a sense of how that probability accumulates as we move across this x-axis. So far, we've seen how to build a histogram for a numeric variable, but what happens if your data have different categories? If you would like to split your data out by some categorical variable, like other seaborne plots, the hist plot also accepts this argument called hue, and what you want to pass in here is just the name of the column that contains your categorical data. This splits up your data by that hue column, and you'll see one different color for each different species in the data set. If you do find that the distribution of your groups overlap quite a bit, you have a couple different options. The first option is to change this element argument. So instead of using the default bars, we could switch this element over to step, and that will just show us the outline of what the histogram looks like. This is sometimes easier to distinguish the different layers of your categories. You also have the option of setting element to poly, which will produce these nice polygons. And so here we've kind of smoothed out what the histogram looks like. Again, this helps with distinguishing different layers for your categories. And the other argument that can help you distinguish between these different categories is called multiple. So right now the default is going to be layer in that each of these categories are layered on top of each other, but we can change this if we'd like. Let's switch it over to stack. So now if we're thinking about count on the y-axis, Seaborn is actually counting up which species appear in each bucket and just stacking them on top of each other. So for example, we see all three penguin species in those middle buckets. Another option with multiple is called fill. So fill basically scales each bucket to range between zero and one, and then it's just showing you the proportion of each species in each bucket. So for example, about 50% of this bucket is made up by Gentoo penguins, and the other 50% is Chinstrap. Another brand new option in the hist plot is to build a bivariate histogram. So that just means we're going to have two different variables, and we're also going to use color to represent the counts. And you may have actually seen me demo this with my joint plot video. So let's take a look at how this works with the hist plot. So one really neat option with the new hist plot is that we can now plot two different variables together and form a bivariate hist plot. So in order to do this, all we need to do is pass in both an x and a y value here. So y will be our column in depth, and this is just another column in that penguin's data frame. And so now we have the Kalman length on the x-axis and the depth on the y-axis. And in the middle, we've basically switched over to a heat map. So we can see where values commonly fall, both in terms of x and y. One disadvantage now, however, is that we no longer have a scale on the y-axis because we're displaying two different variables. So if we'd like to know what these colors represent, we can add in a color bar. And to do that, we just set C bar equals to true. And this is nice because now we can map all of the colors that we're seeing exactly to quantitative numbers. So right here in this darkest color, we have about 17 observations. We've counted up about 17 different penguins that have this length and this depth. The bivariate hist plot also accepts this Q argument. So again, if you'd like to set, split this out to a categorical variable, you can do that. And you'll see a different color now plotted for every single species. This is pretty cool for seeing general trends for the different species, but I will caution you that if these distributions are overlapping, which they certainly are, you will not be able to see those overlaps. 
Another way that you can use this that I think is pretty cool is if you switch your y variable now to um, the species, so this is going to be the y and the hue match up with each other, you'll get these really nice color bars. And so I think this is really, really cool to be able to compare the distributions of the different species, but you are just seeing this in a really visual sort of way. And like usual, let's close out this video with a few styling tips. Like most seaborne plots, there are many, many different ways to style the Hiss plot, but I just wanted to show you a few of my favorites. So in this Hiss plot, I actually have the species, the sex of the birds, and I'm plotting this out using this dodge property. So that will give me these various different bars where I'm just saying how many males and females are there for each species. But by default, what is happening here is that all of the bars are running into each other. We don't have any nice gaps here between the various species. So there's an argument that I definitely use often, and it's called shrink. This basically will just shrink those bars down, and so now we do see a nice gap between each of them. I would definitely recommend doing that if you're using this dodge style. Also, like other seaborne plots, you have lots of different options for color. Um, if you'd like to switch everything to just one color, that can be accessed with this color property. Or if you potentially have multiple different colors being plotted out, you'll want to use a palette option. And there are so many different palettes you can choose from, whichever one just makes sense for your aesthetics. And lastly, the Hist plot comes with this nice fill option. So right now all of those bars are filled in, but I could switch this over to false if I wanted these kind of outlines of bars instead. And like I mentioned, there's so, so many more keywords that you can set when you are working with the Hist plot. One thing I just wanted you to be aware of, the Hist plot is inheriting from many different portions of the matplotlib library. So it just depends on what kind of Hist plot you're making what kind of options you have available. So if you are building, let's say, a univariate bar plot, like the basic hist plot, those keywords will pass through to the bar object in matplotlib, whereas if you're making something like a bivariate hist plot, those are passing to this P color mesh. So just take a look at these docs if you want to do even more styling with the hist plot. So I hope you enjoyed learning about the hist plot and are ready to make some awesome histograms. As always, the code I demoed is available on my GitHub page, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to leave me a comment below or check out one of my other Seaborn videos. See you in the next one.